Hey programmers, welcome back. So you might have heard of this architectural design pattern called backend for frontends. Now, what does it mean? Let's imagine we have a web app, which is our client, and we're connecting to a general purpose API. Now, what is our web app? Well, we are an e-commerce clothing website, okay? People can shop on our website and buy things, okay? Now, when the web app connects to our general purpose API, and this in the background is connecting to other services like the payment servers, order servers, inventory service, and so on, our general purpose API is simply going to return the needed data back to the web app, okay? Now, let's say our application or our company is growing, and now we need to scale, scale in terms of the user experiences. Now, no, we're not only gonna have a web app, but we're also going to have a mobile app. All right, and next to the mobile app, our product managers came up with, with a great idea of developing a TV app, okay? A TV app is basically going to function kind of differently. It's not gonna be a shop, but rather, as soon as you open the app on the TV, we're gonna do some kind of a slideshow of our newest apparel on the shop. And every slideshow is going to contain a short video like on TikTok or Instagram. And then users are able to click it with the remote control. Well, now we have a different situation here because we can connect these apps to the general purpose API like this and everything's gonna function, you might have said, but indeed this is going against the principles of proper scaling. Now, the reason is we're gonna have a single general purpose API, which kind of aggregates the data, but all the requirements for the web app, for the mobile app and the TV apps are actually very different. In the case of the web app, we're able to show the whole catalog of the things. For the mobile app, we're not gonna show the ads, for example, we're not gonna show the preview of the clothing, which might include a couple of images as soon as you hover over the element. So we need more bandwidth here, or we need the app to be fast, fetch less things for the app to be fast and show less things at the same time. And for the TV app, we're gonna show mid videos primarily. So as you can see, the requirements are different and the non-functional requirements are also different because if we connect to the same general purpose API and download the video, we need a different endpoint for that. We need to optim optimize this endpoint in a separate way. Now there's a concept called backend for frontends in order to combat this, to combat basically the bloating of this general purpose API, okay? Now it's kind of bloated. It's doing too many things at the same time. And if we assign a single team per app here and just one team that's gonna manage the general purpose API, it's really difficult to manage all of that logic because how can you split this big thing or give this big thing into one team but still do everything modular for the other things, all right? So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to keep our use cases here, but instead of having a general purpose API like now, we're gonna create separate backends for every use case or let's say user interface, user experience. And now this one is going to point to this one. We're gonna call it BFF, which stands for best friends forever. Not, not really. It's a backends for backend for frontends now in this case. All right. Now everything's pointing to each its own backend. And as you can see, these arrows can now come from different places. So this one is going to also contact this one and so on. Let me just draw this for you quickly. This one can go here. And as you can imagine, everything's mixed under the hood. So these are like the underlying microservices. Now, what are the benefits here? We can now optimize our backend specifically for the web app. We can optimize the fact that it can fetch many data from the database. We can make sure that we have a proper fallback here. So for example, if the call to this service fails, but all the other calls succeed, we're gonna try to kind of return an empty data for the data that was supposed to come here and of course optimize the web app here. And eventually we can give this whole solution of this backend and this web app to a separate team so that the team doesn't have to wait for another team to complete something, but rather we can hire some full stack developers and they can just take care of this product themselves. Okay, same thing with the mobile and the TV app. Now, there are many things that we need to discuss, which is this is probably gonna lead to code duplication. And this is one of the trade-offs that we need to make, okay? So according to the Conway's law, the organizational or the software design 
is mimicking the organizational design or the design of the organization. And this is the perfect example of this. We're trying to mimic every user experience in our architecture in the backend. And this is gonna give us a lot of flexibility. But as I said, this is gonna lead to a lot of code duplication because let's say we're fetching the items in our store. Definitely the items are gonna be same in this case and they're gonna be same in this case. They might be different for the TV app, okay? But for this one, it's gonna be the same interface and it's gonna be the same database architecture or the query, at least it's gonna be the same. Now, here's a trade-off that we simply need to agree. If we go for the backend for frontend and we acknowledge that this pattern is actually beneficial for us and the pros are outweighing the con, the single con of the fact that our we're gonna have a code duplication, then we actually can go for the back and for front ends pattern, okay? Now, another thing is how do we manage the authentication and logging? Do we put another layer here on top? Uh, which is going to be like its separate own separate layer, or let me just change the color here. Let's say gateway, or each backend for frontends is is gonna have its own uh, gateway like this. Okay, so this is also something you need to decide because both of them have pros and cons. In this case, we're going to be more flexible. Okay, everything's gonna go through the gateway for each service, but we're gonna have more overhead because we have to tailor it specifically for each service. But in this case, we're gonna have one gateway that authenticates every user. And this is probably gonna be easier. So it again depends on the, uh, on the company structure. Another thing, coming back to the call duplication, what we can do here is moving the logic from the backends for frontends, these services, more to one of these services. So that one of the, one of these services kind of tackles the logic uh, that is similar here and here, okay? And in this case, we're gonna be having less code duplication because this service is actually responsible for contain or handling similar operation, all right? So as you can see, this design pattern is all about having very optimized and thin clients, meaning the logic is going to live in the backend for frontends, and this guy is going to decide what to query next, which microservice to query next, and it's going to be specifically tailored to our use case, such as web app, mobile, or TV app. And now, if you like the video, smash like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.